The network is at the center of all our work in the second phase of SMIL. We started building that in the first phase, and we realized through that uh, first phase that the real power comes from uh, the network in in those countries uh, in the region. Uh, and on the U.S. side, we're really just, just here to support uh, the growth and the strength of that network. One of the things that um, I've been really excited about um, coming out of the SMIL activities is the power of the scientific method. As a new uh, assistant professor, I was really excited about tech, uh, the new technology and how I could, you know, uh, bring it to bear with these collaborations with African scientists. As I did more and more work um, in these international partnerships, I realized the most important technology uh, that we had was the scientific method, which is one of the cheapest and most broadly applicable uh, technologies that humanity has ever discovered. And so a lot of the training and the um, research partnerships are really about how to get uh, researchers and breeders connected as effectively as possible through the rigorous use of the scientific method. Luckily, when uh, the scientists learn the method, they can take it away uh, with them back to their home program and it doesn't cost a thing. It's absolutely everything. Uh, we think about it every day and um, we don't leave it to chance. That's why we build right into the projects, um, collaborations with, for instance, farmer organizations, the people who are actually gonna be growing those crops and consuming um, the, the, the products from those crops. Looking at the, the history of, um, of crop improvement, um, it goes well when everybody in the research and development system is really committed and accountable to making sure there's adoption. So money, resource, and everything. First of all, I think it is training people first. I, I don't want to be the only one um, being the expert on that. I have to uh, just allow the future generation know what I'm doing, and then they will be like uh, people helping me uh, in the future. So first, uh, training them, like uh, getting, uh, letting them to know what I'm doing exactly and they can understand what uh, the challenges may be. And then the next is, uh, I think, yeah, to, to have a real, I want to make uh, my institution like a center of excellence. So where uh, uh, it will be, possible for all crops in uh, working in genomics and uh, plant breeding can work uh, together there and then it will help a lot of smallholder farmers and end users. So working together and creating the network and then helping um, uh, training for the future generation, especially women. My research skills that I developed was very uh, kind of like technology-based uh, skills. And those skills, uh, most of the time, we, uh, they are not well developed uh, here where I am right now. One example of that is, for example, the implementation of Goal High, is the Goal Directed Hypothesis Driven Research. At, uh, before that, we were just, for example, developing research objectives. Sometimes they are not connected to the breeding program's goals or what the stakeholders they need, like what the local communities they need. But right now, we are able, we are trying to implement those goal high skills in our daily uh, research, especially with uh, the students, especially the master's students level, and even the PhD students. So while they are conducting their research, they will keep in mind how they're gonna link the objective or the research objective with the breeding programs and what also the local communities they prefer, especially in terms of trade varieties preference or uh, what kind of uh, agroecological region they should focus and how to be more precise while developing their research skills or breeding skills. Like yesterday, I had a meeting with uh, 
some of my colleagues, but I was the only lady in the room. So, um, and then, <laughs> and then I, I was looking others and said, okay, I think we have a lot of work to do uh, to integrate female uh, scientists in um, research and also in, in education first and then in research. It is sometimes challenging because you are, you are facing um, sometimes, uh, in, in my case, you'll be the only one in the room and then your, your voice will not be like as uh, heard as the others or maybe you are not uh, inside the room, they don't consider. So I think it is it is really challenging, but my institution and other uh, programs that I am working on, they are pushing forward to let female scientists uh, continue their work and also to um, like uh, to progress or to to enhance science in, uh, in their uh, area. What is most special about this experience is the deep kind of um, collaborative relationships I've been able to build with scientists all over Africa. I feel so lucky um, to have been able to do that. And that's not an opportunity um, that you can get with um, most um, funding agencies that are, you know, focused um, only on um, you know, a narrow slice of science. Here we were able to go out and um, find new colleagues and develop these partnerships over now uh, seven years, um, working with uh, these scientists um, as they grew in their careers and took leadership positions. It's been so rewarding to be a part of that. I was fortunate to, uh, during my PhD study, to be involved in a team that we were always working uh, together with other breeding programs. Not only the breeding programs here at Senegal, but also the breeding programs in India, program in Togo, Burkina Faso, and even Mali. And all the germplasm that we were using, they were already assembled by the different uh, researchers, geneticists, physiologists, and breeders as well. So those materials, they have improved varieties, local varieties, some introduced line that have major important trade, agronomic trade. And we got to collaborate uh, efficiently. We got to know, to develop our network. And right now, most of them, we already have been working together. 